Hi everyone, today's topic is tooth and its supporting structures. Tooth consists of enamel, dentin, pulp, cementum and supporting structures alveolar bone and periodontal ligament. Moving to enamel. Enamel is an epithelially derived protective covering of tooth and it is the most highly mineralized tissue in the body. It is unique because once it is formed, it is not formed again in the lifetime that is the enamel forming cells that is the ameloblast are lost once the tooth erupts into the oral cavity and it will not renew and this highly mineralized tissue which is formed by the matrix proteins once the enamel has been formed the entire organic matrix were removed as bulk so these are the two features why enamel is unique Moving to the physical characteristics, the enamel consists of 96% of inorganic which comprises of hydroxyapatite crystals that is calcium, phosphate and carbonate ions and uh, traces of selenium, lead and fluoride were formed if these elements, these trace elements were present during the formation of an enamel and consists of 4% of organic material. Dissolution of these ions leads to the formation of dental caries. This provide the chemical basis for the dental caries and this high mineralized tissue helps the enamel to withstand heavy occlusal forces during function. And the color varies from light yellow to gray white. It is generally translucent. The thickness varies from 2.5 mm on the occlusal aspect to the feather edge of the cervical area. So, structure is very important. The fundamental organization of an enamel is composed of rod, interrod, which is surrounded by rod sheath. Rods will be cylindrical in shape with crystals arranged parallel to the long axis of the rod, whereas interrods surround the rod. Okay, it surround the rod and the orientation of crystals will be different than that of the longitudinal axis of the rods. So, the rods and interrods together will give you a keyhole appearance like this. And enamel, so enamel comprises of a long ribbon like crystals which will be 60 to 70 nanometer in length. That is the length of the, the length spans the entire thickness of an enamel layer. Moving to the direction of enamel rods, how these enamel rods were present in the deciduous and in the permanent teeth. So, in the deciduous teeth, in the cervical and middle third, it will be horizontal. Okay. And it will be oblique in the occlusal third. And in the cusp tips, it is almost vertical. Whereas, moving to the permanent teeth, in the cusp tip, it is again vertical. And in the middle third, it is horizontal. And in the cervical, it will inclined towards the root. So, here you will have the root. So, the uh, rods will be inclined towards the root in the permanent teeth. Moving to amylogenesis. Amylogenesis is nothing but the formation of enamel. It will occur in two processes. The first is the initial mineralization where it is mineralized only up to 30 percent. Then it is mineralized to 96 percent by the concurrent accretion of the minerals. Amyloblast have a unique life cycle which is characterized by progressive phenotype change that is it will have its own primary activity throughout each phase of the cycle and they secrete matrix proteins that provides an environment favorable to mineral deposition. Moving to the light microscopy of amylogenous which is broadly classified into pre-secretory, secretory and maturation stage. In the pre-secretory Remember four P's that is the ameloblast will acquire phenotype, change polarity and it has high protein synthetic apparatus and it will permit or it will prepare the uh, ameloblast to secrete the organic matrix. In the secretory stage, it will elaborate and organize the highly ordered tissue and in the maturative stage, it will modulate and transfer ions so that concurrent accretion of mineral will occur. So, life cycle of an amyloblast consists of morphogenic stage, organizing, secretory, maturation, transitional and protective. 
will go through each stage. The first being the morphogenic stage that is the inner enamel epithelial cells will be either cuboidal or it will be low columnar with a centrally placed nuclei and it will undergo mitosis. Golgi apparatus will be seen in the proximal area and mitochondria and other organelles will be scattered. Here this is the picture of a morphogenic stage ameloblast okay, where the Golgi apparatus were in the proximal area and the other organelles were just scattered. Look at the size of the ameloblast which is either cuboidal or low columnar. Moving to the organizing stage, now you can see the difference in the size of the cell. So, the nuclei will shift proximally with mitochondria, Golgi and centrioles will be present distal. One more important thing is the inner enamel epithelium will be polarized that is it will not do, do, do not divide after this and there will be formation of odontoblast differentiation that is as soon as the inner enamel epithelial cells polarized it will interact with the dental papilla cells and differentiate into odontoblast thus the acellular zone which is present will disappear at this process then these ameloblast will come closer together by the formation of a specialized structures called junctional complexes it will be present both in the distal and the proximal end namely distal junctional complex and proximal junctional complex and these junctional complexes will have something called actin filaments which will radiate from here to the cytoplasm of the ameloblast and then it will form something called terminal web. What is the purpose of this terminal web is it makes the ameloblast remain attached together till the formation of an enamel and this also decides what's to go in and what to go out of an enamel during its formation. Moving to the secretory stage, as the name suggests, it reflects intense synthetic and secretory activity. So, the enamel proteins were packed in secretory vesicles, okay, and they have been thrown out into the distal tombs process and it will lay down enamel. The first formed enamel will not have any rods or interrods, it is the first formed enamel which is formed away from the dentin against the dentin and the whole uh, ameloblast will move away once the enamel has been formed and the proximal surface will lead to the formation of something called enamel partition that is interrods something like this which will have a pit and the, there will be a partition that is present like this and the distal part will form rods which will be filling this pit that is these outer layer that is the partitions will be formed by the proximal and the inner pit will be filled by the distal contributing to the rod and interrod. So, this picture clearly depicts the interrod from the proximal surface and the rod from the distal surface and this is the proximal surface where the interrod is formed. So, interrod is formed ahead of rod. Moving to the maturative stage, maturative stage is nothing but the growth of the pre-existing crystals. So, with, when the growth has been occurred, there will be a bulk removal of matrix proteins as I have already mentioned. This is the unique feature of an enamel that is the whole mineralization that is the whole after the whole mineralization, the maturation occurs by the prolonging the uh, width of the crystals and removal of the matrix protein. And there is a stage called transition where the amyloblast will reduce in size and the organelles will also be reduced, undergo programmed cell death that is 50% of amyloblast will undergo programmed cell death during its transitional stage and other 50% during the final maturative stage. There is a special feature something called modulation. Modulation is nothing but cyclic creation, loss and recreation of highly invaginated ruffle ended apical surface. That is the ameloblast will be changing from this is the ruffle ended will be changing from the ruffle ended to smooth ended which will occur once in 8 hours. Okay. What is the use of this? Due to the formation of the enamel that is due to the formation of more minerals acidification occurs. So, this ruffle ended will secrete bicarbonate ions. 
which will alkalizes the enamel fluid thus preventing reverse demineralization so modulation is one of the main important process which occurs within the ameloblast to maintain the alkalic nature of the enamel fluid to prevent reverse demineralization so moving to the differences between ruffle ended and smooth ended in the ruffle ended the leaky region is the proximal surface whereas in the smooth ended the leaky is the distal surface and the tight is the distal in case of ruffle ended here the tight is the proximal in case of smooth ended ruffle ended leading to incorporation of organic material and smooth ended will help in the exit of protein fragments and water and the change of ruffle ended to smooth ended and smooth ended to ruffle ended is known as modulation moving to the final stage that is the protective stage in the protective stage again have a look at the size of the ameloblast it has reduced in size and these ameloblast along with the papillary layer combine to form something called reduced enamel epithelium as the name suggest the ameloblast reduce in size okay it is protected until the tooth erupts into the oral cavity and once it is erupt into the oral cavity it interacts with the oral epithelium to form something called junctional epithelium hence the amylogenesis is nothing but initial partial mineralization and subsequent maturation with the increase in the width of the crystals with bulk removal of enamel proteins so enamel proteins which play a main role in the formation of an enamel consist of 90% of amylogenin and 10% of non amylogenin so this enamel lysine calicrin amylotoin and apin were few of the non amylogenin where enamel lysine belongs to matrix metalloprotease family metalloprotease family and the short, it helps in the short term processing of newly secreted matrix proteins and calicrin 4 belong to serine protease family and it is the bulk digestive enzyme that is to remove the organic matrix then comes the amylotoin and apin as the name starts with a it is present in the apical surface of modulating ameloblast and hence it helps in the adhesion of enamel organ to the ameloblast so everything starts with a so it is easy to remember ameloton apin which is present in the apical surface of modulating ameloblast and it is press it is helps in the adhesion of enamel organ to the ameloblast moving to the mineral pathway and mineralization which is very unique because it doesn't have matrix vesicles which plays main role in the mineralization and maturation of collagen based calcified structures such as dentin or bone so there is no equivalent formation of predentin or osteoid here in enamel it is just the direct formation of crystals over mantle dentin so then how come the calcium just pass through the enamel it is passed through the enamel with the help of an endoplasmic reticulum and there will be smooth sinusoidal pores through which the calcium gets into the enamel surface so finally the enamel formation is something complex and diverse and also destructive why ameloblast should Uh, spend so much time in forming a highly mineralized structure with so much complexity but there is no survival potential beyond the point of mineral induction It still remains a puzzle enamel structure itself is complex because it is formed by the isoforms of the same protein which leads to the bulk of the enamel the final complexity were formed by the non amylogenin okay so it is mainly the protein protein interaction intracellularly and as i already mentioned there is no equivalent of predentin or osteoid were formed it is just not, it is just protein protein interaction then amylogenin enzyme and it it forms new crystals which leads to the uh, expansion of the enamel layer once the crystals were 
spatially arranged the final expansion occurs something called volumetric expansion which occurs after removing this amylogenin in bulk which is which has a mineral promoting activity now moving to the histological structures that is present in the enamel the first one being the stray of rhizius otherwise called incremental layer of rhizius which is nothing but the weakly rhythm in enamel production or oppositional or incremental growth of the enamel layer so the distance between each stray is 4 micrometer next is the optical phenomenon and the first one being the hunter sugar bands it is seen in the longitudinal ground section and it is nothing but the alternate light and dark bands under incident illumination which can be reversed by altering the incident illumination and it is due to the change in the direction of rods and next is the nailed enamel which will be seen in the cusp tips where the enamel rods will twist and they will have a complex arrangement so this is the picture depicting the direction of enamel rods from the dej to the enamel surface and at the surface it is getting twisted up and produce a complex structure so this and when we see it under the microscope will give you a something called optical phenomenon something called narled enamel and here this picture shows cut surface of two layer of prism this is one layer and this is the second layer and they are directed at different angles moving to the hypocalcified structures we have something called enamel tuft and enamel lamellae enamel tuft will raise from the dej to the enamel surface and it will have an appearance of tuft like grasses whereas enamel lamellae is a crack which appear from the enamel surface to the dej enamel lamellae is of three types type a b and c the type a consists of poorly calcified rock segments in the crack whereas type b consists of degenerated cells and type c consists of organic matter which is derived from either tooth or saliva so it differs by the presence of content in the crack moving to something called perichymata perichymata is nothing but transverse wave like grooves okay it is seen where incremental line of rhizius reach the outer surface of enamel that is we can uh, simply call it as external manifestation of stray of rhizius moving to enamel caps and brocks enamel the surface of an enamel is not even so it will have a dip and an elevation so dip is nothing but pit and elevation is nothing but broke so why there is a dip it is due to the loss of something so what is lost ends of amyloblast after the formation of an enamel then elevation elevation means something is added up so what is added deposition of enamel and debris of the enamel organ is added so the surface of enamel is not smooth it will be either pit or there will be either elevation so a picture just depicting enamel caps and brocks that is pits and elevation moving to enamel spindle enamel spindle is nothing but the extension of odontoblastic process to the enamel surface before enamel or dentin is laid down and it will be dark in transmitted light so here in this picture you can see numerous enamel spindles okay that is nothing but the odontoblastic process extending towards the enamel surface moving to the clinical implications enamel hypoplasia so as the name suggest there is defect in the matrix formation so there will be either thin enamel either with pitting or grooving or there will be total absence of enamel so this picture shows pitting of enamel that is the brownish pits all over the enamel okay so this is enamel hypoplasia and enamel hypocalcification where there is defect in the maturation 
So, this type of enamel will appear opaque or chalky areas as given in this picture. Moving to molar incisor hypomineralization which will occur due to systemic illness during the formation of an enamel and it will affect mostly the first permanent molar and incisor that is forms within the first year. So, if any kid within the first year of life have any systemic illness then this condition can be more common. So, this defect will break down since the enamel is very soft due to the masticatory pressure. So, patient will have a complaint of sensitivity. Fluorosis when the fluoride in water exceeds more than 1.5 milligram per liter, there will be formation of fluoroapatite rather than hydroxyapatite. Then the fluorosis will appear such as white patches or brownish patches all over the teeth. So, it will vary from mild, moderate to severe. So, the critical period is the first 8 years. So, when the kid is overexposed to fluoride during the first 8 years of life might have higher chances of getting fluorosis. Amylogenesis imperfecta, very common term. It is nothing but clinically and genetically heterogeneous group of conditions that affect enamel. Okay? It could be either X-linked or dominant or recessive trait. So, the teeth could be hypoplastic or hypomineralized or it might have both. Amylex that is defect in amylex leads to something called X-linked amylogenesis imperfecta and defect in enamel lysin and calicrin will have autosomal recessive pigmented hypomaturation amylogenesis imperfecta and defect in amylotoin will also lead to formation of a genetic disease that is amylogenesis imperfecta. So, this table clearly depicts the mutation in enamel protein defect and their clinical appearance. Amylogenin as I already mentioned it leads to X-linked amylogenesis imperfecta which will have vertical pits and grooves and there will be vertical bands of alternating normal and abnormal enamel. Then moving to enamelin. Enamelin leads to generalized hypoplastic amylogenesis imperfecta where there will be minor pitting to diffuse generalized thin enamel. Then moving to calicrin 4 that leads to hypomaturation amylogenesis imperfecta where the enamel will be white opaque with mottling or they have brownish discoloration and there will be regular chances of enamel chipping. Moving to MMP20 that is matrix metaloprotease 20 which, uh, which also helps in the formation of enamel and defect in this leads to autosomal recessive pigmented hypomaturation amylogenesis imperfecta. So, it will be mottled and characteristically have an agar brown appearance, the enamel fractures exposing the soft dentin. So, there will be higher chances of sensitivity and one unique feature is this patients will have anterior open bite. Moving to the next heart tissue that is the dentin. Dentin forms the bulk of the tooth. It is bone like matrix which has odontoblast traversed throughout its matrix and dentinal tubules with cytoplasmic extensions of odontoblast were present and it is it almost have a S shaped or sigmoid shaped dentinal tubules into which the odontoblast will be traversing throughout the length. Dentin consists of 70 percent of inorganic 20% of organic and 10% of water. It is yellowish in color. The structure of dentin consists of peritubular dentin and intertubular dentin. As the name suggests, peritubular dentin delimits the tubule and it is highly calcified matrix. Whereas the intertubular dentin is the one which is present in between the peritubular dentin and this forms the bulk of the dentin and this is the primary secretory product. Okay, and it is formed in between the collagen fibrils that is mainly type 1. So, this type 1 collagen act as a scaffold upon which this intertubular dentin is laid down. And there are few non-collagenous proteins such as dentin phosphoprotein, dentin xylophoprotein and dentin glycoprotein. 
which will be forming the which will be closing the pores of the collagen fibers all three will be depicted as a single molecule in the genome level that is dendrin xylophosphoprotein so moving to the types of dentin it is either primary secondary or tertiary under primary circumpulpal dentin which lines the pulp chamber and mantle dentin which forms the outer surface of coronal dentin and something called secondary dentin which is formed after the root formation deposition is much slower when compared to the primary dentin and there is something called tertiary dentin which is formed only when there is stimulus such as a caries or any restorative material so it is only formed when there is a stimulus or when there is an irritation so the such type of dentin will not have a proper dentinal tubules it might be either sparse or it is totally absent and when the such type of dentin is formed from the pre existing odontoblast okay we call it as reactionary and when it is formed from the new odontoblast we call it as reparative and when these odontoblasts secrete this dentin there will be a uh, few odontoblastic cells will be embedded in the dentinal matrix and such type of dentin is called as osteodentin moving to the dentinogenesis dentinogenesis is the formation of dentin so it usually occurs in the bell stage once the inner enamel epithelial cells reach its polarity these uh, papillary tissues that is the dental papillary tissues will start differentiating into odontoblast and starts forming dentin and root dentin needs proliferation of hertwig's epithelial root sheet from the cervical loop area so the first sign of dentin formation is the presence of large diameter fibrils okay which is nothing but von koch fibers okay and then the dentin is laid down over the fibers by the odontoblast and they have matrix vesicles which is absent in case of enamel since these were collagen based calcified tissues they all mineralize with the help of a matrix vesicle so this man in this matrix vesicle mineral phase starts as a single crystal which will grow inside it then break the confinement and it will fuse with the adjacent crystals to form an homogeneous mass that's how dentin is formed so this picture shows the proper production of dentin so these were the dental papilla cells which were just disoriented in the dental papilla and the inner enamel epithelium once it reaches the polarity that is the ameloblast so here it is called as inner enamel epithelium once it reaches its uh, once it reaches its polarity we call it as ameloblast that is it will not might uh, it will not undergo cell division after this okay so the formation of these fibers von koch fibers and the odontoblast will start laying down dentin the first formed dentin is pre dentin later the odontoblast moves down as the dentin has been formed okay so how does the mineralization starts as i already mentioned we, there will there is an important structure called membrane bound matrix vesicles and the mineral phase starts with a single crystal which will grow rapidly and rupture the confinement of the matrix vesicle it will fuse with the adjacent crystals to form an homogeneous mineralized matrix pattern of mineralization could be either globular or linear globular calcification is nothing but there uh, nothing but the globular globules were fused together to form an homogeneous mass whereas that pattern of calcification when it slow down or when it is organized we call it as linear calcification okay moving to the histological aspects of dentin what are all the structures we can see under microscope interglobular dentin which can be seen in the ground section when the globules fail to fuse 
and form an homogeneous mass there will be formation of these black colored structures okay which will appear black in transmitted light so these were interglobular dentin and then sclerotic dentin when the dentinal tubules were filled with calcified material it will appear sclerotic and it will most commonly seen in the old age people tombs granular layer the name suggests granular but it is not the exact granule present over there it is just the looping and coalescing of okay terminal branches of dentinal tubules that in ground section appear as granular layer hence it is termed as tombs granular layer and something called dead tracts that is the occlusion of dentinal tubules by any calcified material leading to the dying of the odontoblast present there so it will appear black in transmitted light mainly it is associated with tertiary dentin formation that is when there is any stimulus the odontoblast coalesce and die moving to theories of dentin hypersensitivity dentin hypersensitivity is one of the main important uh, symptom which many patients will come across so dentin is sensitive because it is exposed but how does it is sensitive what there are many theories they have been formulated to explain the dentin hypersensitivity the first one being the direct neural stimulation which suggests that the neuro the nerve fibers which is present along with the odontoblast this yellow color which is present along with the odontoblast will take away the pain sensation and thus it is depicting it as dentin hypersensitivity but again this theory is not it is rejected because the nerve fibers were absent in the outer dentin and when there is topical application of analgesics it doesn't provide any symptomatic relief then comes the hydrodynamic theory which is the widely accepted theory the dentinal fluid inside the tubules stimulate receptors in pulp leading to dentin hypersensitivity then comes the transduction theory which states that odontoblast act as a receptor and it will simulate the pain but there is no neurotransmitter vesicles in the odontoblast and there is no synaptic relationship between the odontoblast and the nerve endings to perceive it as a pain so the only accepted theory is the hydrodynamic theory which states that the dentinal fluid movement is responsible for the receptor stimulation in the pulp moving to the clinical implications dentinogenesis imperfecta as amelogenesis imperfecta had defect in enamel dentinogenesis imperfecta have defect in dentin which is due to the mutation in the dspp gene it will affect both deciduous and the permanent teeth so it will have a light brown to light gray in color and it it appears like a tulip that is the crown will be broader with much increased cervical constriction so it will appear like a tulip okay then type 2 it is also known as shell teeth with multiple pulpal exposures then comes the dentin dysplasia where you can see normal enamel but atypical dentin it is of two types in type 1 the roots were short and blunt and the pulp chambers were obliterated whereas in type 2 it will have large pulp chambers and radiographically there will be an appearance of thistle tube the root appearance were referred to as thistle tube appearance then moving to the regional odonto dysplasia otherwise known as ghost teeth which leads to the uh, retarded eruption of most of the tooth okay here there will be normal enamel but the there will be increased predentin width and there will be uh, more amount of radio opaque structures in the pulp chamber and there will be presence of interglobular dentin too because there will be a defect in the fusing of the globules of minerals